Electric vehicles are struggling to gain traction in Indiana. Our Clayton Baumgarth and Isabella Visperini hit the road to find the story. State electric EV sales account for about 4.6% of all new vehicle sales, up from 3.6% last year. But Indiana still falls behind other states in building adequate infrastructure, such as EV charging stations along highways. But one Purdue research team might have a solution to that problem. Eve Brindell leased a Hyundai Ionic about six months ago. She opted for a lease instead of purchase because maintenance costs were lower and it came with a three-year warranty. I was driving a very large um, SUV and it, I was didn't want to have it, a, a real gas guzzler. Hyundai also provided a home charging station, which Brindell says makes it easier to charge her car overnight. It takes about six hours to charge her car fully. Even though she does not charge her car around town, she thinks more should be done to make charging more accessible, especially on highways. I haven't taken a road trip yet. And I do think that that in the Midwest is something that might be a little bit less convenient. This past winter, Brindell drove to Indianapolis with an 80% charge. Due to the cold, she only had 40% when she had to drive back. She tried to go to a nearby charging station, but the charger was broken. I was able to drive home and I ended up home and I think I still had, yeah. I don't know, 30 miles or 10% charge on it. But it was nerve wracking. Brindell thinks electric vehicle sales are slow also because they are more expensive and very technology driven, which potentially scares off less tech inclined customers. This car has so much technology, which I'm pretty sure that I only understand about maybe 50% of it. And it's still to the point where if I don't understand how to do something, change my settings or something, I need to go to the dealership and ask someone to help me. Those in the industry say it's the infrastructure limits that have slowed electric vehicle sales in the Midwest. Fewer charging stations are available in the Midwest than on the West Coast, where electric vehicles are much more popular. The public perception um, has not really changed towards saying, hey, I'm OK with the charging range. I'm OK driving to maybe southern Indiana, northern Indiana and knowing that I'm going to be able to get back. Hyundai in Bloomington used to sell an average of 10 electric cars within a 30-day period. Now that has slowed to an average of 10 sales within a 60-day period. Naran says hybrid vehicles have the highest demand. With Hyundai seeing a 110% increase in vehicle sales since 2021, the majority of which were hybrids. You're seeing car sales go back up, um, partly because of rising inventory levels. And, you know, during the pandemic, there were very low levels and very high pricing. Um, so it kind of kept a lot of the buyers out of the market. But one research team based at Purdue has an idea to add to the infrastructure conversation. What if the roads that we drive on were able to maintain or increase the charge levels of EVs wirelessly, similar to how some phones do it? The Purdue team has been working with the Indiana Department of Transportation to develop a stretch of road on U.S. Highway 52 near Lafayette that would charge electric heavy-duty trucks and semis as they drive over it. The plan is to install cables under the concrete road that would transfer power to receiver coils underneath electric vehicles. So they will need enough battery on board to be able to get to the electrified roadway and then get off of the electrified roadway to their final destination. The focus is on heavy duty trucks and semis because the batteries needed to operate them are large and resource intensive to produce. If the roadway can maintain the charge of a truck, it can carry a smaller battery and have more room to transfer more goods. Critics against electrifying our vehicles have often pointed to the lack of infrastructure as a symptom of our electrical grids not being able to support all the new charging stations. Brovant says this system would be an improvement in that regard over charging stations because the energy is more evenly distributed over a wider swath of land, causing less overall drain on the grid. This paradigm of roadway electrification is actually, uh, in my opinion, easier than the idea of just replacing the gas station model with uh, electric charging stations because um, that was going to require much more power in a much smaller area um, that has to be delivered there. This project has the potential to transform the interstate system in the next few decades. Years of experimentation remain to prove this concept will actually work. Car manufacturers would have to get on board as well and build the needed coils into the underside of their vehicles in order to interface with the road system. If we are able to electrify the the interstate system, you, know, you can get on you could get on the interstate in New York and you know drive west you know and you wouldn't have to get off until you either biologically felt like you needed to or until you want to it's a large undertaking but as brovant puts it so was bringing electricity to the whole country or building the interstate system itself and it's easy to see how transformative those works were for modern society
On average throughout the country, over 4.3 million electric vehicles are driven, and they account for about 1% of that total of all cars driven in the country. But for infrastructure, there's only 160,000 chargers available publicly, meaning there's about 27 electric vehicles per charger throughout the country. For Indiana News Desk with Isabella Vesperini, I'm Clayton Bongarth.